Hello conservationists. In this video, we're going to do an overview of the web app called Soil Web. So I have Soil Web pulled up here. And uh, normally when you first start it up, uh, it will navigate to uh, Davis, California, because uh, the, uh, the main person that sort of runs this is headquartered out of Davis. Uh, so what you can do to navigate to wherever you're lo located uh, is in the top left, you see this little uh, target, you can click on that, and uh, your browser might ask if you want to share your location, you can go ahead and say allow, and it's going to kind of triangulate your location based on your, your internet service provider. And I'm recording this from K-State's campus, so it got pretty close to, uh, to where I am. And from here, you can uh, click and drag to move the map. And let's say if I want to zoom into the North Farm, uh, at the bottom right, you can see I'm uh, going to click the plus sign, and that zooms in. And what you're seeing is the boundaries represented with a yellow line of all the mapping units that have been mapped uh, by the National Cooperative Soil Survey and the NRCS. And so these mapping units, uh, they all have their mapping unit label. And, uh, and what you can do to explore them further is you can click on a, a particular location. And so let's say I click on this 3919 mapping unit. So click once. And what it does is it brings up the map unit composition. And so it tells us the name of the map unit, small and silt loam, 1% to 3% slopes, parentheses, and then it has the map unit label, so 3919 in this case. The map unit composition is 85% the small end series, 5% Geary, 4% Irwin, 3% Tully, 2% Wymore, and 1% Aquals. Uh, so that is all the, uh, the different map unit components uh, that are included within this 3919 map unit. And if we click on one of these, so let's go ahead and click on the primary map unit uh, or map unit uh, component, the small one. As soon as you click on that, it brings up this little cartoon version of the small one series. And what it's doing is it is querying the official series description for the small one. And it figures out what the color is. And then it fills in the box of this little cartoon soil profile with the color uh, so that it renders uh, with a um, a, a regular sort of digital screen uh, in, a, in a color that would act, that would most closely correspond to a Munsell soil color chart. Uh, so you can see what the color looks like for each of the horizons. You can see what the depths of each horizon are. And you can see the master horizons. In this case, we have an AP over an A, BA, BT1, BT2, BC, and a C. And it's described down to 200 centimeters. So that is the first window that kind of pops up for that, uh, for that soil. Uh, before I get into the data, I want to show a couple other things that are happening here. So we, have, um, so we have all this data that's available to us, organic matter, clay, sand, and so on. Uh, the, we can also click underneath the name of the series. We can click Soil Data Explorer, Series Extent Explorer, and Description. So let's do Soil Data Explorer. And uh, this brings up... Uh, the Soil Data Explorer uh, website or web page, and it starts on the official series description for the small one. We can look at lab data. Apparently, this series doesn't have enough uh, enough pedons described to be able to create the summary figure. Uh, we can look at water balance. Uh, we can look at what soils are related to it uh, based on USDA soil taxonomy. Uh, so, in this case, uh, we are looking at uh, let's see, here's a small one. So, uh, so small one, a couple of related soils are the Tully and the Irwin. So you can see maybe how these compare, at least color wise, uh, and master horizons. Um, and you can look at competing series. So there's the ones that are particularly similar to the, uh, to the small one. You can look at what soils are related to it within the subgroup. You can look at block diagrams uh, that include it. So uh, none for Riley County, but let's look at McPherson. Yep. Guess I'm not really seeing the, oh, there's, there's a small one. Uh, uh, so here's small one on this block diagram. 
and I might look at another county. Let's go to Rice County. Uh, you can see uh, Smolin showing up there as well. So, um, so you get some example block diagrams. You can see all the map units that it's included in, and then it has the soil series extent. Now, going back to soil web, that was another option we can go uh, is directly to the soil series extent. So we can click on that option, and it brings up that same map. Uh, so this shows you where in the world uh, this particular series has been mapped. And then the last part is the description, which uh, uh, we can read the description in a previous window, uh, but we can also uh, read it within uh, the, the Soil Web web app right here. So you can look at all the information there. All right, now let's explore this data a little bit further. So we have organic matter. Uh, we can see organic matter by depth, clay content by depth, sand by depth, the water holding capacity, saturated conductivity, pH, KF, electrical conductivity, sodium absorption ratio, calcium carbonate, gypsum, CEC, uh, and it shrinks well. All right, so uh, so that's all the data that's uh, that's available. So again, soil sketch is uh, the little cartoon version. So you get some idea of what the of what the soil data looks like. Uh, you can also look at soil taxonomy, and in this case, we have a mollusol, and then it goes in a suborder, great group, subgroup, family, and series. So, um, so you can see all that for the for the small one series. Uh, some other useful pieces of information that are readily available within Soil Web uh, related to the the land classification. So, um, some of these might not might not be avail available because, like the California Story Index. Uh, we don't use the California Story Index, which is used for irrigation here in Kansas, so that's just not available. Uh, but we do have Land Capability Class, and so this is a Land Capability Class 2, and then it has uh, the E rating, so that means uh, erosion is the biggest risk. And if you have questions about that, you can click a question mark, and then it describes some more information about it for you. Um, and it has it for irrigated and non-irrigated. It has the ecological site description. So in this case, we have the Lomi Hills, and you can click on that because it's a hyperlink, and it will bring you uh, to the Lomi Hills uh, ESD. And then just keep on scrolling down. We have um, how much organic carbon is in there and so on. So lots of stuff with land classification. We can look at hydraulic uh, erosion ratings. Hydraulic and erosion ratings. So that's wind erodibility group six, wind erodibility index 48, uh, T erosion factor, uh, so five tons per acre per year, uh, runoff medium, drainage, monoliteral drained, hydric rating no, uh, hydro, hydrologic group, group C, paramaterial, we have LUS, and total plant available water holding capacity of uh, 37.98 centimeters. Uh, so you get some basics for hydrology and, and erosion. And then um, there is a forest productivity uh, heading, but it's not really relevant for an area that uh, isn't forested, so it's just not included. And then we have soil suitability ratings. So we have some basic suitability ratings that, are, that have been applied here. So you can look at agriculture, uh, forestry, waste, engineering, so lots of, lots of options for engineering, wildlife, and so on. So, uh, so if these have been evaluated in, in that state for that particular soil series, uh, it will show up in, in, this, uh, in this option. And then the last part, there's the details, and it just has some, uh, some details there from, from Sergo. All right, so that's kind of the basics of, of what is included when you click on the map. Now, one thing I'll note, I'll note is we can go back to, uh, so if I close this, click close, then it goes back to the map unit composition. And uh, from there, let's say that maybe the soil I'm looking at, maybe it doesn't quite match this, this version of the uh, of this Smolin series. And so I can close this and I can look at the Geary and uh, we might have a different soil that maybe is more representative of the one particular site that we're, that we're at. Uh, so, uh, so you can kind of switch back and forth between different 
uh, different map unit components uh, within a particular map unit. And all I did to do that was just click close and it goes to map unit composition. All right, now uh, the next thing I can do is I can click on a different map unit. And in this case, it's nearly the same map unit, but it's a more, uh, it's a, a steeper slope. Uh, so it's a different phase. Uh, but let's say I have to go down by the stream. Now we have the Ivan and Kennebec uh, complex. So, uh, or excuse me, association. So Ivan and Kennebec silt loams, occasionally flooded. Uh, so we have two different soils uh, that happen to be relatively similar. All right. So that's the basics of web soil survey. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I uh, I really enjoy um, oh let me back up. I said web soil survey. This is soil web. Uh, so web soil survey is also a web app, uh, but it has a different interface. Uh, both Soil Web and Web Soil Survey uh, use the Sergo uh, data set. So uh, they're accessing the same data. It's just a little bit different of a user interface. And uh, what's convenient about Soil Web is that you can access it on, a, or on your cell phone when you're out in the field. And it'll use the GPS of your phone to figure out what location you're at. Uh, there is an app that uh, Soil Web uh, has available uh, if, you want, if you have an Android or Apple phone. But uh, the availability of the app does sort of depend on uh, whether they get funding uh, to support the app. So the, the, the web app is always available, and I actually prefer that because it's really easy to get to the map. Uh, but uh, the, the application that actually gets installed on your phone uh, does kind of depend on, on funds available. So, uh, so I think this is a really useful field app. I use it quite a bit between this and Google Earth uh, for, for aerial photos. And, and Google Maps uh, actually access this, this, these apps quite a bit just to figure out where I am, what soils there are, and um, and the different map or the different components within each map unit. All right, let me know, know if you have any questions. Take care.